Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thank you for attending our Specifying Proper Ancillary Equipment for Chemical Take Applications webinar. My name is Ed McMahon. I'm a sales manager here uh, at Eastern Reliability. Before we get started, just want to let all of you know that you're going to be muted during the presentation. So if you have any questions as we go along, just go ahead and enter them into the questions panel that's located in the webinar control panel. And we're going to try to get to as many of them as we can at the end of the presentation. Um, if we don't have time to go through your questions, no worries. We'll make sure we get back to everybody uh, via email. Also, we're going to be recording this webinar and it'll be posted on our uh, uh, on our website and our YouTube channel after uh, the webinar is finished. Our presenter today is Jay Fernet, sales engineer here at Eastern Reliability. Um, Jay has the full responsibility for all of the engineering integration uh, and quote development. Uh, Jay came to Eastern Reliability back in 2018 and has got many years of experience in mechanical engineering, estimating, and project management. Uh, Jay's been uh, a great asset to us um, uh, since the Eastern Reliability was acquired by the Liberty Group in 2018. Uh, Jay worked for some time for uh, General Dynamics Electric Boat um, before he came to us, and his ability and experience um, in problem solving on tank applications you know, with, it, with, which include instrumentation, mixing, transfer, and piping components has been invaluable. And so today he's going to spend a little time talking to us a little bit about how to best specify all the products that go around tanks. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Jay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, taking the time out of your day to join us for this webinar. Today's webinar, as Ed briefly explained, we'll be uh, discussing specifying proper ancillary equipment for chemical tank applications. The agenda for the webinar will be to review proper tank selection, various types of fittings, vents, flexible expansion joints, lifting lugs, restraints and tank stands, as well as any tank monitoring equipment means for heating your tank and insulation packages offered. We'll be in touch on tank agitator systems and ladder options as well as some chemical feed equipment will be discussed that Eastern Reliability can assist with specifying and designing for your chemical tank applications. I'll briefly review proper tank selection. If you visit Eastern Reliability's website, as Ed mentioned, there's the webinars and past webinars will be posted there, one of which which goes into more depth on how to properly specify your tank based on the chemicals being stored. Eastern Reliability represents Asman Corporation of America's polyethylene storage tanks, as well as Justin Tanks FRP tanks, Mass Tanks steel tanks, Plastic Concepts custom polyethylene storage tanks. As many of you are aware, tanks are available in many shapes and sizes, from vertical to horizontal single and double wall, closed and open top, flat or conical bottom, full drain outlet tanks are available as well, as well as custom rectangular and secondary containment, which vary in sizes uh, in shape, whether they be circular or rectangular. In this section, we'll discuss in more detail the different types of fittings, vents, and flexible expansion joints. Depending on the design requirements of your system, there's an appropriate fitting to be used, ranging from bulkhead fittings all the way to double wall, lower sidewall outlet fittings. Uh, depending on where these fittings are located on the tank, there is an appropriate fitting that you want to use. The image on the right there you'll see is Asman's full drain outlet. And you can see the tank elevated on one of Asman's full drain outlet tank stands, which we'll go and talk about a little later in the presentation. As many of you are aware, bulkhead style fittings are one of the most common types of fittings used. These types of fittings are ideal for any location on small tanks. On larger tanks, over 3,000 gallons, you wanna be sure to only use these bulkhead types of fittings on the top flat areas of the tank. Eastern Reliability and Asman do not recommend 
that four inch bulkhead fittings be installed on any sidewall of the tank as it's difficult to create a proper seal on the curvature of the tank. Bulkhead fittings are installed through a through hole in the tank and the fitting threads onto itself with a gasket on the inside tank wall as seen in the picture there. There are also female threads that go down the inside of the fitting which allow you to install piping from both ends or equipment onto either end. The next type of fitting I wanted to talk about was flange style fittings. These types of fittings are ideal for insulation on the sides of the tank as these types of fittings utilize, utilize donker bolts. These donker bolts allow you to create a nice tight seal on the sidewall curvature of the tank. As you can see, the donker bolts are essentially metallic bolts with rubber encapsulated heads. Therefore, the chemical inside the tank does not come into contact with the metallic bolt itself. The one downside to this type of fitting, though, is that the fitting leaves the cross section of the tank exposed. Unlike the bulkhead fittings, which prevents any chemical from contacting the cross sectional area, this is critical to avoid these types of fittings when you're storing very aggressive chemicals such as muriatic acid or sulfuric acid. In cases where you are storing aggressive chemicals and you need to prevent exposure of the cross section of the tank from the chemical, you want to go with a metallic style fitting. Metallic style fittings is essentially a combination of both a bulkhead and a flange style to allow you to prevent, as I mentioned, cross-sectional exposure, as well as create a proper seal on the curved sidewalls of the tank. When you're trying to place one of these metallic fittings, especially large ones on a small diameter tank, you want to, you want to utilize the rolled one, which is seen in the middle. Therefore, you can form You can form the um, fitting to the to the sidewall of the tank to create a proper seal. These fittings, as you can see, come with either male threads, a flange incorporated into design, as well as female threads. And these fittings come in various types of metallic uh, packages, from hastaloy to titanium and stainless steel. Another great feature that Aspen offers are full drain outlet fittings. One thing to make to keep in mind when you're, uh, if you need to use one of these full drain outlet fittings, is to make sure that the tank is. If you do not elevate this tank properly, as you can see, the the full drain outlet does hang slightly below the bottom of the tank. So if you do not raise it, it will stress the fitting over time, and potential for leaking is high. These full drain outlet tanks are molded with a metal insert into the sidewall of the tank. And then there's also a molded flange outlet, as you can see, that has the accepting metallic end that threads onto that molded in insert in the tank sidewall. If you have a double wall tank application that requires a lower sidewall outlet fitting, Asman offers a double wall metallic fitting. These are, Asman's tanks are designed in such a way to accept, and as you can see, this type of fitting utilizes two gaskets, one on the inside of the tank and one on the interstitial area between the two tanks. This is a very nice feature to have if you're trying to draw from the bottom of a double wall tank. Depending on your design and piping layout, you may require you to have a fitting on the the dome portion of the tank. These self-aligning dome fittings have a ball swivel incorporated into the design to ensure you have a nice uh, vertical position for any piping or equipment that you need to maintain a vertical alignment with. I've also found pretty great success using these types of fittings 
when I have an agitator incorporated into the design. If it needs to be off center on the dome of the tank, you want to use, I like to use these um, in case there's any vibration or movement of that shaft and it's not going to rub against, you know, just an opening in the top of the tank. This kind of serves two purposes to add extra support to the, to that opening as well as it'll wear out the fitting instead of potentially, you know, wearing out the, the hole in the tank or, or even, you know, causing a crack in the tank. Therefore, you can just easily swap out the fitting if needed, if, if wear and tear becomes an issue. Those self-aligning dome fittings that Asmin offers only go up to three inches. So if you need a, if you need to have a, a nice flush connection on any size opening on the on the dome of the tank, Asmin offers these fabricated flange dome fittings. These secure to the tank similar to how the flange style ones do, the normal flange style ones do with donker bolts and a gasket on the exterior side of the tank. And Asmin fabricates these in-house to give you a nice flush connection um, vertically on the dome of the tank. Now we're going to transition to be over to some more specific fitting accessories offered um, based on your design goals. Image on the right, as you can see, would be um, the flexible expansion joints. Flange adapters can be easily added onto almost any of the previous fittings that we just discussed. They're available in many different materials uh, as lot, you know, to go along with the, the type of material fitting you have, whether it be CPVC, PVC, or polypropylene. Asmin can also provide these, your tanks with mushroom vent assemblies seen on the right, or a U-vent assembly, if it's something that's not going to be vented outside the building. So you don't have to worry about providing yourself with a vent. The tank will come installed with them already. Another great feature to consider using is one of these anti-foam anti elbows. These again can be installed onto essentially all of the previous fittings that we just discussed. And it's similar to pouring a, a can of soda into a cup. It basically directs the flow against the sidewall of the tank to prevent any foaming. For any lower sidewall connections that you're trying to use, utilize as a drain or even a pumping out any liquids, um, Asmin offers these siphon drains that will be installed for you so you don't have to worry about getting into the tank and doing it yourself. Um, and this, as you can imagine, ensures as much liquid as possible is removed from the tank. Another great feature that Asmin offers are these fill line assemblies. If you don't have a, a tank that's situated inside a building with some overhead piping, it might be a standalone tank. These are This is a great feature to consider utilizing as well. Um, as you can see, it gives you a nice clean piping down the sidewall of the tank. That piping is secured with a bracket and donker boat assembly, as we've previously explained. The assembly also comes with a male cam lock adapter, as well as a dust cap for your convenience. As oftentimes, many of these tanks are filled with a chemical tanker, um, and that's the typical connection that they utilize. Similar to the fill line assembly, you have the drop tube assembly. Uh, I see these a lot on double walled tanks uh, when you don't want to have a penetration going through the side of the tank to, to draw the, the chemical out. Again, these, these are similar to the fill line assembly that the piping is secured to the side of the tank for you. So you don't have to worry about that piping rattling around during shipment or uh, filling or emptying the tank. They can also be tied in with the fill line, fill line assembly, if that's something you wanted to consider. It can be one big assembly to assist uh, if it's a standalone tank without any overhead piping. Here you'll see 
the proper ways to install one of the flexible expansion joints that we offer. As you can see from the diagram on the right, you want the flexible expansion joint to follow any valve that might be in the piping assembly. And then after both the valve and expansion joint is when you want to have the pipe support bracket. This allows the expansion joint to do its job, which is to let the tank move freely as it empty and fills. This is especially critical on large tanks as they tend to move a lot more as you empty and fill them. In this section, we'll dive into a few different ways uh, we can lift the tanks up as well as restraint the tanks and the different types of stands or tank pads that we at Eastern Reliability and Asman can offer. The images on the right, as you can as you could see, would be the polyethylene restraint and lifting lug system. As, as I mentioned, there's a few different ways um, to lift the to lift the tanks up, as well as restrain them, and there's a few different types of tank stand options that we can offer. The image on the left would be one of the side mount lifting lugs, and these again are attached to the tank in a very similar manner as the rest of the accessories that we've and fittings that we've gone through already with the donker bolts being on the inside and the gasket on the outside. Same goes for the center mount lifting lug which is seen on the right. That's typically placed in the middle depending on the size of the tank. You either need one or two and for the side mount one it's typically just four needed and they're equally spaced around the top side of the tank to ensure the tank is properly lifted. Another benefit or accessory that you could have, um, I don't see this ver used very often, but I figured I'd mention it. Um, if, if you have a design that requires uh, the tank to be restrained laterally, uh, Asman offers this passive restraint system, which is basically a band that goes around, an assembled band that goes around the outside of the tank, which can be secured to the ground to prevent the tank from shifting uh, laterally. One system that I do see used a lot, especially out west, is the seismic restraint system that Asman offers. The top lugs are, as I mentioned before, are secured to the top of the tank with the, the donker bolts and a gasket assembly. And the bottom anchor kind of tucks underneath the radius of the tank, which then gets secured to the ground. This system is seismic rated and PE stamp calculations could be provided upon request, depending on your requirements. And these are approved in all 50 states. And as we were discussing briefly before, if you have one of the full drain outlet fittings, the tank stand on the left would be the one to utilize. As you can see, it's sort of like a pizza pie assembly that kind of fits together. There's holes around the perimeter of that that can be used to anchor down. That tank stand can also be tied in to the polyethylene restraint system that we just went over. Asman also offers on the right smaller tank stands for their smaller tanks up to 300 gallons. In this section, we're going to be discussing the different types of monitoring system assemblies that we can offer here at Eastern Reliability. These range from leak detection systems all the way to liquid level monitoring systems, pressure monitoring, temperature monitoring, or even flow leaving the tank if you need such equipment in your piping assemblies. A great product that I see utilized a lot, especially uh, obviously with the double wall storage tanks, is this leak detection system. This is something Asman installs on site. Therefore, you don't have to worry about wiring this up yourself 
if you wanted to do it yourself and drop those probes down on the inside, they take care of that before they assemble the two tanks together. It's a really nice feature to have. Obviously, its benefit, uh, its purpose is to monitor if the primary take is leaking out into the secondary containment tank. We don't see this very often with Advent tanks as they're very well constructed, um, but it is something a great, you know, a great feature to keep just just in case of, you know, the oddity of, of something bizarre happening there. Another great system that ASMIN offers is a reverse float level indicator system. Here you basically have a float that rides on the liquid on the inside of the tank. And as that float and the level and the level of the chemical go up and down, it's connected to a weight in a clear tube that rides in the tube up and down as the liquid level goes up and down. Again, it's an assembly uh, similar to the fill line and drop tube where that exterior pipe is supported uh, with a docker bolt bracket and gasket assembly. This is just a real nice simple system to use to visually monitor your liquid level. It's usually seen on dark tanks double wall tanks or insulated tanks where it's not easily with it normally translucent tanks uh, you can usually see through here Advent offers the standard sight gauge assembly this assembly comes in three different styles uh, I only have two of them shown here the two most used ones um, the standard one with one valve on the left and the other with the three valve assembly, which you can utilize that lower bulkhead fitting as an outlet as well. Um, as long as you have the valves, you know, positioned in the, in the correct orientation to allow the flow out. Some, some more specialty equipment that Eastern Reliability can offer. For level monitoring, especially if you need to tie it into some type of an electrical system you might have on site or your SCADA system, would be the ultrasonic level transmitter. Um, these are typically used if you if you're trying to monitor a, a more hazardous or aggressive chemical where you don't you don't want to have any pieces of equipment touching the chemical itself. Uh, if you don't have a very aggressive chemical that's compatible with you know, usually stainless steel. You can go with more of of the equipment seen on the in the middle or on the right. Um, the float switch float switch in the middle is basically, as you can see, a ball that that rides up and down um, a rod that goes down into the tank. And this and all of these pieces of equipment can provide a four to twenty milliamp signal for you, as I mentioned, so that you can tie it into your system. As I mentioned before, we can also assist with temperature monitoring equipment, whether it be a simple digital temperature sensor or an RTD temperature transmitter. There's also several other pieces of equipment that we can utilize. Like I mentioned, if it's not something that can be in direct contact with the chemical, they do have you know, uh, remote RTD sensors, as I'm sure many of you have come across uh, going to restaurants some places are taking your temperature with one of those uh, RTD sensors. Another piece of equipment that we can help you specify is these pressure monitoring equipment. Uh, I've seen a few customers utilize these pressure monitors to actually determine the level in the tank. So again, if this is something that your design calls for, it's definitely something we can assist with. A lot of these products are ATEX certified. So if it's in a class one, div one area or class one, div two area, it's definitely something we can assist with. So keep that in mind. Also, a lot of customers have been reaching out to us lately um, for these flow flow meters. Um, obviously, if you if if it's critical to 
keep an eye on the flow rate of your day tanks coming out of the tank, uh, the, the liquid coming out of the tank. This is definitely another product that we've seen a lot of success with. And obviously it comes in many different size, sizes. If you need it to be in line, you can see the one on the right uh, comes with flanges that you can hook up in line with your piping. This here is one of uh, the universal panel displays that can basically be hooked up with any of those previous products that I just reviewed. Um, it's a real nice compact system. It comes with a, has the option to come in with a NEMA 4X enclosure, and it also has the ability to have a 4 to 20 milliamp output if you wanted to send the signal into this panel first and then send it off to your SCADA system. Uh, if need be. This section here, we'll be discussing the different types of heating and insulation packages that we can offer. There are a few different types of heating and insulation packages we can offer. ASMIN has an excellent maintenance heat trace and insulation system that is available for all of their tanks. We also have the ability to provide immersion heaters or pipe and valve heat trace systems. ASMIN's maintenance heat trace system can be seen here. Essentially, it consists of a silicon pad, adhesive-backed heating elements that are sized and spaced accordingly for the size of the tank. It also includes a thermostat to monitor the heat of the tank system, as well as a control panel where you can set, you know, your parameters for what, for where you're trying to maintain the temperature of your system at. And keep in mind, this system is mainly just to maintain the heat of the system. If you're looking to more, if your design calls for something to more directly heat up the chemical being stored, that's when we would urge you to go more towards one of these immersion heaters which would be obviously directly in contact with the chemical if you need to, if it's coming in at a certain temperature and you need to raise it up to say 100 degrees or 75 degrees or something like that. This is definitely something, um, you know, I've had a lot of success with, especially on steel tanks where you need to, if they're trying to get, you know, the water up to a certain temperature before they use it to, um, you know, clean out something or flush out some equipment. As I mentioned a few slides back, we can uh, assist as well with your pipe and valve heating systems, depending on the requirements, you know, and the size of the piping and the temperatures that you're trying to achieve. Um, we have a team that specializes specifically in this area. So if this is a, you know, an application that you come across from time to time, feel free to send it over our way and we'll be more than happy to design a system for you. This section here, wanted to discuss our capabilities for agitators as well as the agitator supports and the FRP ladders we offer with all of our tanks. As I'm sure you're aware, there's a few different types of mixers that you can use with your tanks, whether it be top entry, side entry, portable mixers, that are usually C-clamped on for smaller tanks, um, as well as the agitator support bridges and stands that go along with these tanks, um, I'm sorry, with these agitators, and um, the ladders that that we usually utilize so that you can get up, up onto the top of the tank to access the mixer or any other pieces of equipment that you may have up there. Again, as I mentioned, I just wanted to have a quick uh, discussion on and show you some visuals of exactly what I was talking about for top entry mixers. Uh, you can see a right angle gearbox mixer on the on the left there. Again, another right uh, a right angle side entry mixer with its self supporting stand, as well as what one of the portable smaller mixers would look like there on the right. Obviously, each application is different and depending on the characteristics of 
the fluid that you're trying to mix, you may want to go with. Um, it's gonna it's gonna drive you to a certain type, and whatever the size of the tank is is also gonna push you to a certain size mixer in design. Here is another good visual of what Agitator Stands Admin offers here for their tanks. The one on the left obviously is for much larger tanks. Uh, these Agitator support bridges go over the entire tank itself. You don't really want to secure an Agitator directly to one of the polyethylene storage tanks. I've seen it done on FRP tanks and steel tanks, uh, but again, it's something you do want to avoid. It's best to have a structure um, that's designed to handle the vibrations and torques that you're going to see. And then on the right, two pictures is um, one of the agitator support stands that Asmin offers for portable mixers. It's a very basic design, but it gets the job done. Again, as I mentioned, we offer fiberglass ladders with all of our tanks. You can get this with all the bells and whistles as seen here with the safety cage, standing platform, and the ladder itself. The ladder assembly, again, is secured to the tank in the same manner as most of the other pieces of equipment that we've discussed with the donker bolts, uh, some brackets, and gaskets. For the last section here, we wanted to review our capabilities for chemical feed equipment. On this chemical feed equipment, we can have the we have the capability of providing tank scales for you, as well as chemical feed stations and the metering pumps that are typically seen with these types of systems. Here you can see a complete package of Asmin's chemical feed stations. These chemical feed stations range from 40 to 550 gallons. Consists of the primary tank, secondary rectangular tank, the tank stand, and pump shelf. The tank stand is optional, um, but it, it is nice to have just to get that tank up a little higher so uh, your pump isn't doing as much work. Here you can see the tank scales that we offer. They come standard from 18 inch wide by 18 inch wide all the way up to 72 inch by 72 inch. Those are just the standard offerings. Uh, if there's something more custom that we need, it's definitely something we can design and accommodate. Again, the standard capacity range is up to 5,000 pounds, but if, if we need to get something to handle more weight, uh, it's definitely something we can look into and uh, provide for you. These are very accurate tank scales, as you can see, plus or minus 0.1% capacity of what you're trying to monitor. And they come standard with, uh, as you see, you know, a, an easy readout LCD display, which can be read out in either pounds or kilograms, depending on what you're design system is calling for. And again, as I mentioned a little while ago, we have the flow rate, um, I'm sorry, we have the metering pumps here. Um, the two key components that I typically need in order to get you the right metering pump would be the flow rate that you're, you're looking to achieve as well as the pressure. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, these wetted parts on these metering pumps are essentially compatible with most of the chemicals we typically see in these chemical feed stations. And they do take a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. Summarizing everything here, as I just went through, um, you definitely want to keep in mind when you're specifying or selecting the proper 
tank materials and type based on whatever the chemical or layout you might have. You want to keep uh, you want to keep that in mind when you're picking out uh, and specifying what type of tank you want to use. Same goes for the fittings and vents and flexible expansion joints. You want to make sure you're cur you're specifying the correct ones based on where it's going on the tank. You also want to keep in mind, you know, the installation requirements you may have when you're trying to get these larger tanks on site and any local regulations you may have to follow in restraining that tank. And as we just talked about briefly, you want to keep in mind your chemical properties um, as far as what you're trying to monitor in the tank and heating the tank. Um, and same goes for those chemical feed stations. Uh, you just want to make sure you have all your parameters laid out properly um, in order to get the, the right pieces of equipment to get the job done. All right, well, at this point, Jay's gonna look at the questions that came in. So real quick, as Jay pointed out a lot of these different product lines and everything around these product lines really focuses on something in products that go in or around tanks. What we're finding is that the earlier you can get us involved in your design, the better chance we have to make sure that you get the right thing specified, not only for little things like we've had many people who would specify tanks, but that don't fit through the, the, the openings that they have, or looking to get a certain uh, tank up or material up to a certain temperature, but then specifying the wrong type of heater. So internally, we have all those resources to be able to provide you. So please give us the opportunity. We would rather talk to folks much earlier in the process and answer questions because it's always easier to do it that way. So with that, Jay, how about the questions? Yeah, so after taking a quick look, it looks like, looks like we have a, a few questions here. Um, first one I got is, I kind of alluded to, to this a little bit, but um, are your other tank manufacturers other than Asmin as flexible in design and offer just as many options? Uh, the short answer to that is yes. The longer answer, which isn't much longer, um, you know, all mass tank, just in tank and plastic concept, they all have virtually the same capabilities to ensure we're meeting what your design requirements are. So um, yeah, the, everyone has the capabilities to you know provide all those different types of fittings uh, where you need it on the tank, as well as if, if it requires a stand or an agitator support on the tank itself, that is all something all of our manufacturers are capable of doing. And it looks like I have another question here. Um, if I was trying to mix a sodium hypochlorite solution, what is my best option for mixer wetted ends? So we work very closely with Cleveland Mixer and they as well have a wide variety of capabilities um, for storing sodium hypochlorite. I've done this a few times recently. And that would be either to provide you know, a titanium shaft and impellers, or another cost-effective solution is a PVC-coated stainless steel shaft. And I think we're getting pretty close to the end of our time slot here, so unfortunately, if I didn't get to your question, uh, we'll be sure to send you an email with an answer and hopefully help you with your application in the near future. Thank you everybody for attending. We appreciate it. And you can look forward to uh, more of these here over the next couple of months and check out our website where we have more of the old webinars and we'll be posting the new ones here shortly. Thanks everyone.